<laughs> Obviously, I did something with my camera. Kind of has that artistic, blurry background. <laughs> Maybe I like it. Some of the best things I've ever done are mistakes, for sure. Anyway, it's great to see you. Puma Pants says hello. You might see his tail flashing. He seems to be on the precipice between two different moods. Anyway, uh, incredibly important topic this week, at least in my estimation. I hope you found it provocative. It, we've been examining the principle of what's the most wrong that we could be in this world. And if we happen to be wrong about the most important thing, the possibly catastrophic consequences that that would have, just like if we adopt a false premise about anything, it just can't go well. And sooner or later, the system will begin to break down under the weight of fraudulent or false thinking. And what we've been looking at is the modern scientific paradigm that says consciousness is produced by our brain. This literally means that what we call our own consciousness, what you call yourself as real as it may seem to you is actually the combination or the collision of certain materials and chemicals inside of your brain and my brain. And it produces a temporary spark of consciousness, which of course produces an illusion of self and an illusion of free will, etc. But modern science scoffs at that ancient superstitious ridiculous notion and has done its best to sanitize the human mind of that and say we should wake up to the fact that our consciousness is really the product of the movement of our mind and there are certain consequences that come from thinking that way and the thing is we don't really get a choice very much other than to think that way we're the products of our environment and the primary uh, ideological milieu in which we grew up. And so since we all grew up in that milieu, there's a sense that that that's true. And here's what comes from that kind of thinking. We think we're separate. We compete. There is strife. There's effort. There's a great deal of the sense of the past and of a future. And there's a strong sense that were temporary, were small sparks within a competing environment. There's only so many resources to go around. It's difficult to distribute them properly and that ultimately there's no meaning or truth to life other than blind, pitiless, indifferent movement of molecules inside of our mind. You might describe that as hell, essentially. Now, the truth is, is that consciousness is primary. If you were to boil this all down into three words and imprint it in your soul and inscribe it on the doorposts of your heart, the way out of that impossibly inaccurate worldview is to remember that consciousness is primary. You will always be alive. You will always be somewhere doing something now think of your current name my name is that's my name i was born then i not sure when my expiration date is but i've heard that it's coming but be that as it may you're not always going to be the name that you think of you've worn an infinite number of names you're always going to be somewhere doing something experiencing something consciousness is in it is absolutely inextinguishable when we remember that when we remember that consciousness is primary, when we remember in religious language, in the beginning, God, when we imprint that inside of our consciousness, first and foremost, it's not just conceptual, a host of transformative life experiences come to us. Trash truck. Now, what comes from remembering that consciousness is primary is that competition turns into collaboration and creativity. The sense of being stuck in time turns into a, a sense of being eternal. Life is a hundred quadrillion consecutive moments of now. The sense that we have to compete for limited resources or try to distribute them equally completely dissolves. 
every point of consciousness can have however much resource they want if they adequately bring themselves into alignment and proximity with it. There's an overall revolutionary effect of connection with all of life rather than feeling separate. When we remember that consciousness comes first and that begins to sink into our being, the primary number one experience that floods to the surface of our awareness is love because love is that state of consciousness and it's the unity that binds us all together. If we're all the products of the movement of molecules in our mind, love is a delusion. It's an evolutionary trick that's played upon us in order to make sure that our DNA procreates. So this modern materialist, as much as science has done for us, and you know me, I love my science, love my iPhones. I like to know that the earth goes around the sun rather than the other way around. But science can say nothing about philosophy and it can say nothing about the truth of who we are. Who says that is our own intuitive knowledge that we are consciousness, eternal, ongoing, made of love and capable of producing any reality in front of our awareness that we choose if we aim ourselves in that direction. So the world at large will learn this very, very slowly. And sooner or later, we'll learn that science was on the wrong side of history, but you do not have to wait. You can simply draw the line in the sand and say, in the beginning, consciousness, and begin to practice that and feel all those concomitant, concurrent effects on your life, a sense of presence, a sense of being out of the vice of past and future, a sense that everything's available to you, a sense that competition dissolves once and for all into cooperation, collaboration, and knowing the love that's inside of you rather than having to grab it on the outside. It's a big difference, isn't it? I look forward to talking about it tomorrow. Have a beautiful conscious day.